Hi guys, one of the things I wanted to do with this uh, other project box was uh, utilise my two peristaltic pumps from China about six or seven pounds each I think they were these are 12 volt versions, they're a bit rough and ready but they'll do the job um, so what I'm going to do is fit both into this project box I've just pre-drilled where I want things to be fitted so the pumps will go in each end like that and then I've got two switches so I can override this uh, just in case there's any you know, sort of emergency where the float valves both of them are stuck open and it's pumping water through uh, you never know when you might want to override it especially if you're doing water changes things like that so both sides will be uh, overridable with the switches now a couple of well a couple of months ago probably now I bought this TMC auto top up unit it has the two float valves not just the one so both of these need to be in the down position before the uh, voltage is applied to the pump now that's a small submersible pump that it comes with I've cut the uh, voltage cable off of there it's horribly noisy I really don't like the idea of that much so that's going straight in the bin but what I'm going to do is both of these whoops, both of these switches will be in the tank that's probably supposed to be a slightly tighter fit than that it does tend to fall off um, probably not in use but when I'm knocking it around here on the table that comes off there's I think just some sort of magnetic reed valve uh, a reed switch because when you move the little float up you won't be able to hear it but there's this tiny little click as you move it up to the top as I say, both of them have to be in the down position before the water will be pumped. If one's stuck up, or if one's stuck down and the other's up, the system won't work. So it's sort of a bit of a redundancy safety system built into that. So both of these will go into the tank. This particular pump I've already wired up and just tested with some tubing in a bowl of water and really it's just I describe it as a fast drip rather than anything else and if I just quickly plug this in I'm using the power supply that came with the TMC auto top up unit I was going to make my own PCB with uh, mains transformers uh, but I've decided I might as well just utilize what I've already got Here, yeah, there we go. So you can probably hear the pump working, but as soon as I do that, the pump goes off. The same with the other one, obviously. Oh, that's fallen over, so you can see that works. They've both got to be in the down position. Uh, so that will be fitted on the left hand side just turn that off and on the other side I will have another one of these just in uh, just in here and this one will be on a timer again I can override it with the switch here if required but this will be on a timer and this one will dose some Kalkwasser during the night when the pH drops a little bit and what I'll do is I'll just monitor the calcium levels and uh, work out how much I need to add each night to keep the calcium uh, up at the right level and whilst making sure that the pH doesn't increase too much. So th this will be dosed uh, overnight. Uh, I'll probably try it for you know perhaps five minutes a night and uh, purely on the timer so again we'll have to monitor the water levels and on the left hand side that will be on the float uh, and that can come on at any time that it likes uh, but it's quite possible that using just the calc pump will be enough to top up the system anyway but again that will depend on calcium levels and pH levels and things like that 
when I dosed that calc the other day, I think we dosed it over a couple of nights and kept the water at the right level, but the pH increased by, I think it was 0.2, so quite a, quite a bit, and you certainly don't want the pH to go up that much very quickly. I think over a couple of days is not disastrous, but probably even longer would be better. Uh, but it did bring up the uh, calcium by 50 parts per million. I think if you saw the figures on the forum, uh, you'll see that it was calcium was at 350, and after we dosed, it was up to 400. Um, I haven't checked it uh, this week, apart from earlier on in the week, but I'll be doing all the water parameters before I do the water change on uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday and just to see where all the the figures are. I've had to order some hole drills for metal obviously. The peristaltic pump takes 27 mil uh, or requires a 27 mil hole and the switches that I've got here are uh, 19 mil. So I'll quickly drill those out and uh, just wire this up. And that's about it. So this, this one will require a 12 volt power supply perhaps an external one, yeah in fact almost certainly an external one and that will just run off of a timer and we'll probably just dose a minute at a time during the evening, uh, sorry during the night uh, as I said when the pH drops and we'll just see how those water parameters are and adjust it accordingly if, uh, if the water drops during the day uh, evaporation or you know when it's, when it's summer it's a bit hotter then the flow system can take over. So <coughs> that's the next project, quick look at that. Uh, maybe that'll be useful to somebody considering their own uh, ideas. I think you probably can buy your own, uh, you know, make up your own float valves. You could also do uh, uh, some sort of infrared or LED system. There's plenty of ideas out there for this sort of thing. As I'd already bought this, I thought I would use uh, the floats and the power supply supplied just with the, the new pumps. Obviously a little bit of uh, a silicon tubing is required, oh, that's come off of eBay. As, as most of the things I've seen to buy these days, it's an awful lot cheaper, especially if you're getting things from China or Hong Kong, uh, like the pumps. So yeah, that's a quick look at that, um, and I'll update you when I've got the holes drilled and everything assembled. Thanks for watching.